Hey guys, thank you for joining us. Um, it's really glad to have everybody here. Um, and well, I'm really glad. And um, we're gonna get started really quickly. It shouldn't take very long. Um, if you are on band, you can follow along. If you're not in band, you can um, just follow along on the PowerPoint that I'm about to show you. Um, a couple of things that we're about to go over are just a regular quick search. Um, something that you do all the time just to search uh, for somebody that you know or that you're, you've met with. Um, we're going to teach you how to add a survey response, a one-on-one, -on -one, and then add a core team member test to VAN so that VAN knows um, that people are moving up the ladder of engagement. Then I'll show you how to schedule someone for an event from that same uh, profile page. It's going to be really quick and easy. And then last, um, I'll teach you how to schedule a follow-up really quickly so that you can remind yourself to call someone back when they tell you, you know, I can't uh, help you out for about two weeks, but give me a call um, then and we can get back to you. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to sh share my screen with you and it's going to work perfectly. Watch this. Yes? Okay. Well, I can't see anybody, so I'm going to assume, oh my God. Okay, here we go, I'm sorry. Okay, so here we go. What we're gonna do is start just from the very first um, page that is your quick lookup page. One of the first things you're gonna remember to do is always check to make sure that you are in my campaign. Um, my campaign, if you'll remember, is where we keep all of our volunteers. Um, it's the database for our friends and family in Battleground, Texas, people that we know and love. My voters is the rest of the electorate, everyone else that we either haven't spoken to yet or um, is not necessarily an ally. Okay, so we are going to add a survey response to somebody's uh, band profile. First thing we need to do is look them up. So from my campaign, you're going to go into Quick Lookup. Um, there's a blue link and you will click that link. At that point, um, you're going to get a search screen. It's just a normal search screen. You're going to enter last name and first name. Um, in this case, it's Andy Dove because he was amazing enough to create this PowerPoint for us. So um, I try to just do first name, last name because it'll um, the more information you put in there, the more it'll narrow your search and sometimes you won't always get the result you need. So you're gonna enter that first name, last name, and then hit search. What will pop up is if that person is already in van, you will see Andy Duh, Andrew Robert Dove is right here. It'll, you'll have to scroll down a little bit to see it. Um, and his name will be in a blue link and you're gonna wanna click that link. You'll also see that his name, address, um, city, age, and phone also show up at that first um, screen. So you can make sure that that's the right person, that there that is in fact the Andy that you want to add a survey response to. So you can go ahead and click that blue link, click on Andy's name, and the next screen that will come up is their profile page. Um, we looked at that last time. Jen Cervella and Priscilla walked us through a profile page last time. Uh, we did a webinar, so you can always go back to that and kind of look at that for a little bit of a brush up. All of the categories that are on that profile page will then be in front of you. And one of them will be add a new survey response for survey responses. This is where we keep information about what um, volunteers, what kind of activity they have with us, whether they've agreed to volunteer with us, whether they have said they wanted to be a volunteer deputy registrar. So we want to add um, that Andy has had a one-on-one -on -one with us. At the bottom of survey, new survey response, you're going to go and see, you'll see at the bottom of that column, there's an add new survey response link. It's a blue link. Anything that's blue is clickable. So at the bottom of survey questions, you've got new survey response. We're going to click that link because we want to add a new survey response for Andy. Okay, so now we're ready to add in all the information that we know uh, 
we know about Andy and that we want to add. Um, you'll see that Van asks you for a couple of different bits of information so that we can track exactly what happened. You're going to select add new survey response. We just did that. You're going to enter the date and a name. The date canvassed would be the date that you met with Andy for his one-on-one. -on -one. Canvas by is always going to be you because you're the person that met with Andy. Unless you're doing data for someone else, you can do Canvas by them. Uh, you'll start typing in the last name, and then usually it'll show up. Uh, for contact type, it was a meeting. Um, you'll get different, you know, you'll get different options when you use that drop-down box. But for this case, it's a meeting. And then the survey question that you want to add is one-on-one -on -one meeting. When you drop down that survey question box, there will be plenty of different things to choose from. Um, but in this case, we're using a one-on-one -on -one meeting. You can look through that to see all the other things that we use to identify volunteers with. Now, in this case, um, just telling Van that we're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting isn't really enough detail. We need to tell Van how, what kind of a one-on-one -on -one it, it was. So um, in this case, it was an introduction one-on-one, -on -one, and that is for someone who's a new volunteer, someone who's never heard about Battleground or we've never spoken to about Battleground. There's also a maintenance one-on-one, um, -on -one, and that's for somebody just like yourselves that are um, current volunteers, people that are actively involved, and we're explaining to them you know, how they can help more or you know, what they can keep doing. An escalation one-on-one -on -one is for someone who is a core team member prospect or someone who's transitioning into being a core team member. Um, I imagine if you're on this call, you probably have been through one of these three types of one-on-ones with an organizer or a friend or someone else in the organization. So you will uh, click whichever is the appropriate response. In this case, we did a one-on-one, -on -one, an introduction one-on-one -on -one with Andy. So we'll always hit save, and that will bring us back to our profile page. Um, one of the other types of survey responses that we just talked about is um, you know, adding a CTM test. That's a core team member test. And if you remember from all of our trainings, um, when you're a prospect, you're someone who is, you know, uh, has a possibility of helping us, and we want to see if, uh, if you'd like to develop that person. You can add a, so right here, sorry, I hope everybody can see this, what I'm seeing, it's my little hand waving. Um, right here, you would um, use the survey question 2015 volunteer 2015 CTM test. And this would be in the case that you want to test a volunteer and start moving them through the ladder of engagement to see if they can become more of a leader in their own neighborhood. Um, the responses that would come out are prospect, test one, uh, test two to indicate that the prospect has helped run an event successfully, and then um, confirmed, which means that they've completed the testing process and that they're a core team member. What that does is help us later be able to pull up everyone that's a core team member in van and then give them a call or, you know, just so that we know where everyone is in that ladder. Moving on. So you're going to want to poke around these things. There's nothing that you can hurt. Um, you're always going to want to look through Van and just really be curious. Test stuff out on yourself on your own profile. Um, that's always one of the quickest ways to learn. Um, the last thing that we're going to go through, and I know I'm going through this really quickly, but this will be recorded, so you can always come back and look through it at your own pace, um, or just kind of mess around with it on your own time. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to schedule a person for an event. So on that profile page that we were just at, where we found schedule, where we found um, survey responses, you'll also see a um, a category that says upcoming events or past events. And at the bottom of past events, oh wait, you will see a list, a little, same thing, a little, uh, a little link 
that says um, schedule for upcoming events. At that point, it will open up this event scheduler. And from here, it's just really plugging in the information that you need. You're gonna click the event scheduler. You'll select the date of the event in the calendar. So the event of the, the date of the event you wanna schedule that person for. And then you'll scroll through the list of events on that day. You'll um, click that event and then this, it'll come up right here. So you're just clicking the event date and then scrolling till you get to the event that you want. At that point, you'll add a status. Um, you'll see a little drop down menu, and you can use that drop down menu to select the appropriate response. So let me switch to the next page so we can look at what those are. Okay, so these are the responses that you're going to have to choose from. Uh, left message is there was, you know, nobody answered, so you left a message. Declined is they answered and they can't attend. Some people like to use declined so that they know, oh, I already asked you to go to this and you said you weren't able to. Um, I, I use it pretty often just so that I know that I've already kind of gone through that person and asked. Invited is a might attend. When somebody gives you a maybe or, you know, I'll try, that's an invited for us. And we know that kind of signals that you can either go back and call them again and say, hey, this was something you were contemplating, um, but you, it kind of is a signal to you that they didn't really commit. Um, scheduled, obviously, is that they definitely will attend. Confirmed is that you've already scheduled them, and now that you've called them back a second time for their confirmation call, they have said to you, yep, I will be there. I do know where it is. I've got all the information I need. Canceled is, you know, they were scheduled at some point, they were confirmed at some point, and now they've called you and said they can't come. Completed is, some, is something that would, you would use for after the event. You would go back in and say, this person completed this event. Um, they showed up, they helped us out, it was great. No show, it's so sad, it's so sad. Um, No-show is when someone is scheduled or confirmed for an event and they weren't able to cancel, they just did not attend. Um, but we do want to make sure that we, we add those in so that we um, can follow up with those people and ask if there was anything we could do um, to get them to come back next time or, you know, just kind of follow up. That's always the best thing to do. Okay, so you, you'll pick one of those million um, options. And then that person will be scheduled for an event. Okay. Uh, the last thing, this is the very, very last thing. It's just kind of an extra thing at the end. What will happen when you call people is that sometimes they will let you know, like, I can't really do anything now, but can you call me back in a week? And uh, the schedule follow-up feature is a really neat way to, uh, to remind yourself. Uh, of calling those people back without having to write it down. It keeps that information in advance. What you'll do for schedule follow-up is go to the profile of the person. Same thing, we'll go to Andy's profile. And under contact history, at the very bottom, in one of those little blue links, you'll see schedule follow-up. At that point, um, it'll open this uh, box. It'll ask you for a follow-up date, so a week from now. Um, and it even asks you, who do you want to follow up? So you can schedule that for yourself, or you can schedule it for someone else, for your organizer, to call somebody back if they need to. Um, how do you want them to follow up? In this case, it's by phone. I need and is somebody to call Andy or whoever. And then notes. I actually always leave a note. You know, they want to talk about this, or I need to call them back because they said they might help me in, in, you know, at 4th of July. I always leave a note. Um, it's, it's amazing how just a week later, I have no idea why I was supposed to call somebody back. So this note is amazing. Um, no category has a drop down. I'm not familiar with that yet. It's new and amazing, I'm sure. You can explore that. Okay, so at that point, after you've written your note, you'll hit schedule. And, um, Van will keep a record of that. 
So at this point, this doesn't exactly show where it tells you, but I'm going to try to do this. Hopefully this will work. When you go to my campaign, after you have so oh, nope, after you've scheduled a follow up, you'll go back to your um, you'll go back to your profile page. Oh, here we go. You'll go back to your main page, and you'll see right here. There's a follow up calls. There will be a little red number there um, a week from now because you have scheduled a follow up call. So you can click that red number or you can click follow up call and it'll lead you right to the person that you're supposed to call. It'll open up the note to tell you why you're supposed to call them. So that's a really handy uh, feature there. I like to use it and um, it's really helpful because I don't always remember um, when I'm calling lots of people. So I am going to unfull screen myself here and see if I can send you back to Priscilla. Um, like I said, I'm really glad everybody is able to be here and I uh, hope you can uh, follow along again if you need to on your own. Okay, let me see. We good?